Yeah, I've never used something like this before. So it's I'm used to using um what do you call that? The uh messenger, but it's okay. so good. So how can I help you? You said you want to interview me about just just about yourself. Um I know recently I started this podcasting project and I just thought it'd be really cool to talk to people um, that I've met over the course of my life, people that have in, impacted me, um, friends, coaches like yourself, and people that I, I'm meeting present day, talking to them about who they are, what their life's journey's been like, and what they have going on currently. So, I mean, I'm, I want to make it just kind of free form to where you're relaxed, you can talk about yourself however you want and we just kind of let it go from there if you want to do another one in the future we can do that as as well it, it, it's just a pleasure to get a chance to talk to you now having gone through high school where I was like man I, I can't stand this like <laughs> I don't like this process this guy's rough on me but like being built up better from that and I sent you a video from the coach that was like telling his players they're out in the rain like he's like I care about you you guys and that's why I'm here like the world keeps trying to make you soft and it's like that's not going to help you like there's you need to be emotionally strong you need to be mentally strong but like sometimes you got to have your head bust you got to have somebody bust you upside the head to like tell you wake up <laughs> yeah you're exactly <laughs> right because you know Asher what the thing was man you know we prepare you you know here's the thing right I told a student today I, I told him that I had a parent conference with his dad and I told him, I said, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's not like me now, you know, hate me later. Yeah. It's hate me now, love me later. Right. 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 And, and I was, because it, I had to give tough love, right. Because, you know, I had a kid that, you know, I had to pull him out of ISS and he was, you know, running off at the mouth being disrespectful. So I got, I said, Hey, brought the dad, dad had to come up from the chicken plant mm -hmm. and, you know, I told in front of the young master, look, Dexter, your dad know he has to work, a, you know, a nine to five and sometimes mm -hmm. third shift. Right. If he did what you did, you know, y'all will be without, you know, you know, he won't be able to pay the bills for y'all. Right. And the dad was like, you're exactly right. So I said, look, I'm trying to talk to you because this is what's going to happen in the real world. And mm -hmm. of course, the kid didn't like it. But I mean, I was telling him what, what, what really what happened to him. Right. So sometimes we do y'all of this uh, injustice if we don't tell you what's I mean. Yeah, let's be honest. Most kids, you're right. You're not right. going to like it because that's the natural thing. Mm -hmm. The natural thing is not to like that, right? Because right. you're saying in your head, man, I hate this, whatever, but you know, <laughs> it's, yeah, you, you can laugh too because it's true, right? But it's yeah. not until you leave, right? And then you get to reflect on it, uh, right. Asher. And then once you reflect on it, then like you're successful. There's other guys that have been been successful those are the ones that that'll reach back and say, "Hey, coach, just like you're doing, mm -hmm. you know what, man? I appreciate what you did ten, you know, so many years ago yeah. because I'm successful because you made me push through something, right? You made me right. work hard, right? You didn't let me give up, you know. You made me uh, run to I would, but you made me find another gear, right? And it's mm -hmm. like it's not until they have to go through something, right? Then they they'll come back and say, "Man, thank you for making me better, right?" Right, right. And, and that's where people miss, um, miss, miss it, Asher. They miss that in life because they fail to realize, right, that life is not easy. Mm -hmm. uh, life is hard. And uh, we do y'all no services if we make, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's just tough love, right? It's, right. It's, and if more people did that, then it's preparing you for the real world, right? Because what right. happens now no matter what you have to do out here in the corporate world, business world, uh, college, whatever, right? You develop a, a work ethic, uh, a skill now that no matter what you go through, right? Mm -hmm. Now you have a leg up because now you've learned something about yourself, right? That, right, right. hey, I can be pushed. I, I don't give up. I found another gear. And honestly, that's the difference, right? In my mind, that's the edge because that's what separates you from the guy or the lady that says, you know what, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna find another way. I'm gonna give up, or you mm -hmm. know, and that, I think that's what's happening to a lot of people. They right. they haven't had any adversity early, right? Mm -hmm. And people just made it easy on them, and then guess what happens, right? Um, then when something does happen, you know, when they get your age or, or whatever, 
well, now they throw the towel in because right. they never, right. And that's what we're having too much of that, right? So the best thing that could ever happen um, for any youth is to be pushed, right? And so what I what we were trying to do, I'm going to be honest, right? Mm-hmm. You know, when we got there with y'all, I knew <laughs> we knew Jordan White. I mean, I knew yeah. walking in the door, maybe one of y'all or I mean, I'm just going to be honest, right? Yeah. I had somebody tell me, when I took the job coming in, they said, "My, they said, my God, they said, uh, they said you've lost your mind, son." They said, "Dog, yeah." They were like, "You committed suicide going down." There. I had people tell me that, right? They were like, right. "You're, cr-. yeah." That's what they told me. They were like, "Dog is just horrible." Yeah. And so I was like, "But you know what I did? You know, every day we were we were having a, we were busting your tail." But here's the reality, right? Mm-hmm. You you do that to a kid or a young man is because you got to make them better than what they think they are you mm-hmm. got to make them better than that you know and, and I, this is what it is right right you get out the bed and and you know you try right but when a coach makes you do a little bit more mm-hmm. then guess what happens right now you become better down the road and this right. this is what right. i'm getting at R- remember what i'm about to tell you asher it's not always about being a state champion right yes sir because i'm gonna share something to you you know, I didn't get the, you know, I got robbed my senior year. I was going in the state semifinals and I, I put, hit a Peterson, put the guy on his back and, uh, and I, you know, for, for whatever reason, the referee felt like, uh, you know, not, you know, they, they sent me a citizenship award <laughs> saying that your character, make, yeah, yeah, your character <laughs> makes you a true winner in life, right? Yeah. Right. They tried to, yeah, so I got robbed from a chance of the state championship. Right. But I have to look back at that, Asher, right? That was actually a blessing because I'm going to tell you why. Mm-hmm. Because I learned something that life ain't fair. Mm-hmm. Life don't always go the way that you want it. Yeah. And guess what? So what I was trying to teach y'all was that, hey, man, you know, we had people that uh, I'm, 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 I'm trying to remember. Uh, I'm going to go back to uh, my first year there. And I remember we went and wrestled Love It. I don't know if you yeah. remember Love It. Uh, barely. Yeah, we wrestled. You, love it. You yeah, gotta my refresh my memory. Then, right? Yeah, love it. Love 2017 or 2007, right? Yeah, love it. Love it. Yeah. They were ranked in the state, and I'm, yeah. I'm just gonna yeah. tell you the truth, right? Yeah, love is ranked in the state. Yeah, and people just thought. I mean, of course, we had went to Notre Dame and got a bad call and lost that match. But yeah, the thing was, right? My philosophy is is that if you do what you're supposed to do, mm-hmm. you're gonna beat people that you should be and every once in a while you'll be people that you shouldn't be right mm-hmm. so love it on paper there's no way we should have won that duel right but i never forget you know we went it was tied at the end jordan white beat the kid and i remember uh dennis duckworth came up hugged me and said <laughs> coach we beat love it and then it yeah. wasn't until the next day that you know somebody was like oh man can you believe that just happened right. dalton was like such and such last year and they beat love it right right and so what happened is, right, we did that because here's the thing, but I wasn't worried about all the coach being a Hall of Fame coach and all this other stuff. I just wanted y'all to go do your best, right? Right. And if we got beat, we got beat. But nobody was going to beat us because we rolled out the red carpet, right? Right, right, exactly. Right. And that was the whole mentality to make somebody say, you know what, like, uh, give you another example. The year we went, we beat Woodward Academy. I think you were yeah. the senior. Yeah, I remember and that one. That's yeah, the only, yeah, that's the only story I remember stuff. from I mean, wrestling. This is true. What would have right. me? The guy, they, they shaking my hey, Hey, how you doing? I mean, yeah. shaking my hand, offering food. Uh, and it, this is true. They had no respect for y'all. Mm. So I think that, I think before the match started, I went in there, threw a cooler or something. I did whatever. Yeah. But I remember, because we're in Atlanta, but I was yeah. upset because it's like they showed, they didn't even warm up for y'all. No, but, no. They didn't warm up for y'all, but, you know, at some point along the way, you know, we we were getting beat, and then all of a sudden, Duckworth won a match. Yeah. You were getting – I mean, the guy almost – I mean, you were getting getting destroyed, but the guy ran out of gas. Yeah. Uh, You you, uh, pinned him. Yeah. You know, you end up pinning the guy, and then that just turned the tide of the match, right? Yeah. And then just from the time you pinned the kid to by the time we got to Christian, he beat a kid that had pinned him the week before. Right. And so what happened was we again we beat somebody that we on paper we should have never beat, right? Right, right. And so my whole point is is that 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 teaches you something about life. Mm. Because imagine what that does to a young man 
when you walk into a Woodward Academy or Love It or so, I'm just, just using this for an example. Right. And right. then you beat a team that on paper you should have never beat. Mm-hmm. Or the year before they were like, oh, y'all are laughing stock or people just offering food, right? It's not even, it's a foregone conclusion. Right. They ain't even taking you serious. Mm-hmm. And so that's the difference, uh, Asher, that now, and here's the thing, it ain't about winning the state championship, but when y'all were like going to the state tournament, you know, and all mm-hmm. that, here's the reality, right? You made a difference because you went from being a team or individual or people just laughed and no preparation to now you're actually, you know, wow, wait a minute, we need to, we need to prepare for them. Right. I mean, went, it, it'd be from, no different than yeah. it'd be like Alabama uh, preparing for LSU opposed to New Mexico State coming to town, right? Right. How many right. people think Alabama got? A, I mean, really? Come on, it's New Mexico State. Yeah. I mean, who's getting up for them? But it'll be the same equivalent. But in the fact that y'all were able to find another gear, man. And here's the thing: those are things that nobody will ever take away from you because now you can always go back to that and say, you know what? I remember that time we walked in the Woodward right. and they were laughing and thought it was a joke, right? And we beat them. Because yeah. it, it's confidence, right? Yeah. It's it's true confidence. And, yeah. Yeah, it's true confidence. Um, and, I mean, that's the thing. Y'all just have to, you know, it, it builds it builds character for you, man, the rest of your life, you yeah. know? It definitely has because I, I know last time I spoke with you, it was um, – is really challenging for me or no last time I was was it over Christmas break 20 yeah yeah yeah, you, yeah, 2018? yeah, yeah well, I spoke to you right so we we spoke and I, I was in good spirits but I had just kind of gone through a bit of depression and um trying to do you have trouble hearing me or yeah I can hear you gotcha yeah, I okay. Can hear you. okay oh that's right because you're using your phone okay but yeah. um so I'd gone through a little bit of depression or not a little bit, like a good deal of depression over that summer. And I'd never dealt with that before. And like, we talk about mental toughness and like, it's kind of hard to be mentally tough when your brain's kind of like your mentality's kind of broken and kind of trying to get over the stigma of like, okay, like I've got to go see a counselor or I've got to go take medication. It's like, Ugh. but finally when I committed to it, like got back on track, got, exercising and things like that it just seemed to yeah. be much better yeah and then um fast forward to this year like i went from being on top of the on top of the moon talking to you to where like it really got really bad this year and Haley. i was almost ready to like check out on myself where i was like okay I'm, I'm done like i forgot about all the wrestling i forgot about all this just because like things weren't going right on like the micro level. I kind of dismissed myself altogether, but like coming back to myself now and putting systems in place to say, okay, that's never going to happen again because, Hey, I didn't just start working in construction for eight years. It's like, it took me 12 years to get here. And even before that, it's like being an immigrant coming from different places. It's like your identity matters and who you are matters. So that's, that's a big reason why I wanted to talk to you because I'm like, you're someone that reminds me of um, Eric Thomas. He's um, ET, the hip hop preacher on YouTube. I don't know if you know him or not, but you guys are yeah. very, you're very similar. And I'm like, that would be really cool to kind of bring you two guys together because he's in the school systems doing his thing. And you're in the school system where you're at doing your thing and just seeing what you were able to do for me. And like a lot of guys for the state of Dalton or the, the city of Dalton, and um, I just wanted to kind of like capture the moment on video or just like on audio and just be able to like put it out in the world to where somebody can see it later. And they're like, oh, how did this person get here? It's like, here's why. And it's not just like happen sense or accident. Yeah. So your your mental, you're, you're definitely right. You know, mental toughness is huge, man, because it you it's who you are right and you and we all go through challenges right right and it's just what's our approach right are we gonna give up or are we gonna or are we gonna keep going right and so for me right i had to go through a lot of uh adversity growing up you know i had to go i would tell y'all about it i you know we had a little stint being homeless i had my daddy on drugs mm-hmm. crack cocaine etc you know coming home you know shotgun and i mean I had all that crazy stuff going on, man. And 
But, you know, again, at, when you're younger, you just, you don't think nothing about it. But then I got older and I started to say, well, guess what? I, I ended up, I got a second gear mm -hmm. because, you know, when the house burned down, I had all that trauma that happened, right? For, right. So most people, they do what? They check out because, right. they, you know, they're like, hey, I'm done, man. And like I said, I had so many bad things happen, but I learned I can only be in control of what I control, if that makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. And knowing that I got to give, and this is what I found out too, I'm running my race. And so I think one of the things that hurt us, especially in the internet and Facebook and whatever we're doing now in our society, yeah. Asher, is that now it's a comparative analysis of you watch what I'm going to say. Like right. what I mean is, like I always wanted y'all to be the best that you can be. Mm -hmm. Like I know we had LaFed and we had everybody up, but we had to be the best we could be. Right. Meaning that, you know, you got to say, hey, look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, did I do the best I could do? And I would have people all the time that would say, well, you came from your daddy one involved or you had a drug infested name. So people would give me all the excuses, right? right. Or why I didn't, I didn't supposed to get out of high school or why I didn't supposed to get a master's or why I didn't supposed to get, get a doctorate. But at the end of the day, I would always tell people, you know, I had to look myself in the mirror because mm -hmm. I knew what my best was and I didn't care what. And I had some people who were like, that's remarkable. <laughs> I, I can't believe you did that, right? And they would say all this stuff. Yeah, and it's, it's, you can laugh, right? Because right. their expectations, I'm going to just tell you, I, I mean, if we really want to be honest about the world, yeah, people, you can't live up, like people, I hate to say this, but you, you got to have high expectations. And I'm going to tell you, some people, man, yep. they'll sell you low. Because if you actually listen to what some people say, mm -hmm. they'll go, well, well, I didn't expect, I, I didn't think you had, wow, that's amazing. Right. Because they that's the way they saw you, right? So life yeah. is powerful because the perspective of how you see yourself or even how people see you. But my thing is I don't care what people see, right? Right. I don't care. Like this is me. Mm -hmm. I'ma give this is my best, right? So maybe other folks saw, you know, poverty, they saw bad drug infested neighborhood, crackhead daddy, whatever, but I didn't see that. My best was this is what I'm gonna do now. Had I listened to other people, Asher, right? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Maybe, maybe I don't get to where I where I was at because I would have listened to the negative, man. So right. that is really the world we live in, man. Got you. The reason we I really live in a world like that that people have low expectations and they will look at the circumstance, they'll look at everything that surrounds you, and they'll say, "Hey, you know, well, maybe he just can't accomplish this," or may, you know. And so you you got to be very careful, man, because people will just but my thing is, what can I, what's my best, right? I'm not right. comparing myself to everybody else. What is my best, right? And, mm -hmm. and you know, at the end of the day, you know, when I give my best, I, I can feel good about it because right. I know I did the best I can do. But right. I'm not going to live my life to somebody else's standard, right? Right. And, right? and just because they think that maybe I shouldn't have X, Y, and Z, I'm not going to listen to that, man. So I think that's the biggest thing, right? You know, mm -hmm. when you... You, you get into who you are as a person and why you do what you do, you know, the purpose that drives you every day. Um, but that's the reality, right? I, right. I just wanted, uh, again, going back to coaching y'all, mm -hmm. I just wanted y'all to find another, because here's the thing, it made me mad because I would have people, wow, did you, they did that? Or they sent that many people? Because people were stunned, right? Because yeah. their expectation was what? Right. We didn't have yeah. any expectations. Like whenever, before you got there, it's like my freshman year, we had a coach that was supposed to be coming up from the middle school. And it's like, okay, like I just got into wrestling for the first time in middle school, like sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. It's like, I was just happy to be out there. Participation trophies, you name it. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm doing something. And it's like, we had a plan kind of going in, but then he got in trouble with something and then he left. And then we had the, uh, assistant principal step in and he was kind of doing what he could but it's like he had other priorities and he really wasn't as engaged so it's like there was no expectations it was just like keep the team going because it's like it's an accredited school you need these four teams and like whether you suck or not like you still have football basketball soccer and I think track maybe sometimes but like wrestling wasn't something that was considered in Dalton since like the 80s Exactly. So, 
You're exactly right. It was just low expectations. And so that's my thing, right? Given your 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 high, you gotta have high expectations. And that's that's the reality, right? Expectations. Right. And if you have expectations of yourself, mm -hmm. then you're gonna be fine. No matter what the adversity is, you're gonna you're gonna be fine. So that's what I find out to ring true in my life. So, mm -hmm. you know, my thing is I don't really you know, adversity, it, it can come, but again, how do you respond? Right. Um, I think I told our students the other day, success in life, you know, is, you know, success in life is making the most of your opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. And how do you respond to adversity? Right. In, in my mind, that's really true because yeah. how many people truly make the most of their, like, you know, or their opportunities, right? That's success. Mm -hmm. Because, but some people don't do that. They're not in the mindset of that. And then how do you respond to adversity, right? Setbacks are, is going to happen. But the difference with a, uh, the people that are successful, they can have a setback, but then they, you get what I'm saying? They respond. Right, um, right. They, they don't sit. And um, I heard a pastor say, he said, the difference between uh, a pig and a sheep is, he said, a pig's natural state they'll lay in the mud and water in it, right? Because that's mm -hmm. what their natural state is. They'll stay in water in the mud because that's their natural state. Right. But it, like a sheep will get up and shake mud off. Oh, you froze for a second. Know, hey, our natural element, right? Does right. that make Wait, sense? Can you say that one more time about the sheep? I so didn't I'm catch saying it. like a sheep. Yeah. So you get a sheep and a pig, right? And right. they both can fall in the mud. Yeah. And a sheep, a, a pig will wallow in the mud because that's what they do, right? That's their natural right. element, just to wall in the mud and, and waddle around in the mud because, you know, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. They don't have this, uh, a sense of, I, I'm going to get better. I'm going I'm to get, I'm going to be better in this. Right. Whereas if you look at a, um, if you look at a, a sheep, a sheep gets up mm -hmm. and gets the mud and shakes the mud off because it gets out because they know that's not their natural element, right? Right, right. They're not they're not made for this. So there's a difference in the mindset. So you mm -hmm. got people out here that face adversity and then, oh, you know what? Or I'm just gonna be a victim and, and lay in the mud and feel sorry for myself. And right. you got some people that are like a sheep and say, nah, man, I can't do this. I gotta get up. Right. And and, and that that's a major difference, right? Because right. anybody can have a setback, a mistake can happen, but then how do you respond to that? And that's what's most important about life, you know, responding. And so really going back to y'all, I was just trying to, you know, I couldn't, you know, you don't need to talk about stuff. But what you do do for a young person is you're giving them some tools to now how they can respond to life, right? When things right. get tough. It's, it's a mental battle, right? And, and, and that's the thing. But if you give me, you give me a young person or a kid that has not faced the adversity, how do they respond when life gets tough? They just fold up. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's true. Because now you haven't responded. Now you fold up. It's game time. And, and you don't throw the talent because you don't yeah. know how to respond. Right, right. And more crucial, uh, Asher, I hate to say it, I don't care where you come from. You can be Christian or whatever family. It, can, it doesn't matter. Yeah. In my opinion, every child needs to have to respond to something. Right. Because at some point in your life, you know, well, all them, all that, it, that's not going to help you. Mm -hmm. Learning how to respond to adversity is going to help you. And I think that's the downfall for a lot of kids in our country is that they just don't have that, right? They haven't right. had that simulated. They haven't um, at home or anywhere. And then now, what do you have, man? You, you got kids in trouble. Yeah. And it happens more, right? Because, you know, uh, actually, the America wants what? Instant gratification. Think about what our culture sells you. Right. Instant gratification. But when you have to, it's like, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's like anything that you got to work for right man. like anything like that you want to work for, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to take some time, right? You right. got to build a right. foundation. You got to dig deep. But you take something that you don't have to work for, right? It's easy to, to go out here and, and do that. But at the end of the day, you know, just do whatever you want. But right. the reason why people don't stay in these jobs Mm -hmm. reason why people give up on families is because they don't have a foundation. They don't have a root system, right? right because guess exactly. what? They didn't have to work. Yeah. Think about it. Because that's the difference between you and somebody else that, okay, guess what? It was given to them. Or 
Johnny go whatever. But guess what? You got something inside of you. You don't have to work for this. Right. So guess what? You're going to show up. You're going to do what was required. Yeah. But you're going to have somebody else to say, you know what, man? I ain't putting in the time. Yeah. I ain't doing this because they don't see the value. Yeah. They haven't had to put work in. And so that's the difference, right? Yeah. You can't you can't substitute that. And so when you get these people out here to think, oh, it's just e it's no, no, it's not easy, right? Anything worth no. worthwhile having is gonna require hard work. Right. Gonna require dedication, gonna require some sacrifice. And I think that's the disconnect that a lot of people, uh, especially with these young folks, you know, I talk to them and oh, you doing this, but I said, this is what you don't see, right? It's like an iceberg, right? right? Right. Iceberg, right. you you see the tip of it, but you don't really see the you see twenty percent on top, but yeah. you don't see the eighty percent that's on the bottom. And so a lot of times that's what's happening, right? People getting these visuals on TV in our society, oh, this is what success looks like. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm driving a BMW or a Cadillac Escalade, whatever. Yeah. But then you don't see that this is the, you know, the work that somebody don't have to put behind it, right? They right. just see easy dollar signs and that's sad, right? So we have to retrain kids' minds and say, no, if you want some, you're going to have to work for it. You mm -hmm. know, you got to put work in because you're not going to be, nobody's giving you something uh, easy, right? right? But then that's the disconnect because now you perceive it to be easy mm -hmm. and then you roll in and all of a sudden now when it's time to put the work in, yeah. you're not willing to go to work, right? Right, right. Because you're like, this, this is not what I, <laughs> this is not what I saw. This is not what I signed up for. Exactly, Asher. Exactly. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it's man, it's the truth, man. I mean, that, that's yeah. that's our society um, in general. It's funny because two things came to mind recently. I saw um, somebody posted on Instagram, and I've been using Instagram as a way to um, really learn the business side of it. And understand that, okay, while people may be on here playing, there are people on like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the social networks that are making money. And at the same time, they're not just making money to make money, but they're looking to make impact in their communities. And I started thinking about how I could do that, being like in engineering, being in construction, and like really trying to find a way to break the stigma because people have this idea of like, okay, if you're a teacher or a coach, they don't see you as like a person. It's like, you still have a life. You have things you care about. You have interests, like whenever we would hang out and stuff like that, you would beatbox, like try and cut the tension and things. And people would be like, ah, like you, you're trying to be, it's like, no, you're not trying to like force your way to be cool. You're just being yourself. And like, I guess people kind of miss that, that authenticity. So if, um, the, the thought that I had come to mind was um, somebody posted this picture of Jeff, Jeff Bezos and they basically had a date or his like his age current day and like what the position is so I'll, I'll read it to you real quick so Jeff Bezos I believe he's the owner of Amazon yeah maybe so yes, so they say at age 55 his net worth is 109 billion at age 49, he buys the Washington Post. At age 39, he survives a helicopter crash. At age 36, he starts a space company. At age 35, he becomes a billionaire. At age 33, he becomes a millionaire. At age 30, he launches Amazon. At age 22, he starts work on Wall Street. At age 16, he has a summer job at McDonald's. So it's like, that's the progression of, um, my math might be a little bit off, but I want to say 49, no, 39, 29 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so roughly 29 years. And like, whenever I looked at that number, I was like, there's something about the number almost that's like at 30, because it reminds me like biblically about the story of Joseph, where you have this, this kid that's told, that's shown this vision where he's going to be, ruling over top of his siblings that are older than him and his parents and whenever he like has the arrogance or like the ignorance to share that real quick he kind of gets reprimanded for it and then what the follow-up is it's like he gets um he basically gets ambushed by bro his brothers he gets enslaved 
from being a slave, he still shines through to where he gets put into a, a leadership position in the household of his um, master at the time or the person that bought him. And the person that basically bought him from slavery or in slavery puts him in charge of his entire household to the point to where he's basically running this man's house, everything but his wife. And essentially he gets accused of sexual assault, gets locked up again. And this is all over a period of 27 years. Mm -hmm. And from him doing what he knows to do by interpreting dreams and managing the few things that's given to him, he's like slowly and quickly continues to shine, continues to shine until he gets brought up to interpret the dream of a king. And then he's position he's put in a position to basically um, navigate and basically help them plan for it recurring famines over a seven year period where they have food for seven years and then they don't have food for seven years. And like all that I said, it is just, it just goes to show that there's, there's um, key lessons that are always present. And sometimes we pay attention to them or sometimes we don't. So for me, I read that story kind of growing up being religious or whatnot, but it didn't really hit until I had to, like put the work in and actually reflect, look back and like work for five and a half years, like take a break from that altogether and just be like, oh, okay, like this is where, this is what's important in my life. This is what actually matters. And thinking back on the people that helped me get here and it's like, okay, this person wasn't against me, but they were actually there to help me. And they cared more about me than anybody else to that point to where you're still able to call them 12 years later. They say, oh yeah, like, of course I'll talk to you because like, I care. And just seeing that and being able to kind of tell somebody that's either like a college graduate now or somebody that's like getting ready to start their journey in life. Like you said, it's good to tell them, hey, it's hard out here, but it's it's possible. It's not like, don't get discouraged just because like, it seems difficult and it might feel like it sucks. It's like, it's supposed to suck, but you getting over that, the bad parts makes you stronger. And it makes you like this hardened mindset to where you're like, oh, okay, like I've overcome this. I learned to wrestle. Like I learned to be in close combat with somebody. I can, I can conquer a test. Like that's not a big deal, but then, okay, I conquered the test. I can work for a company, but then, okay, I work for a company now. I can go and do a personal venture. I can bet on myself. And then I can learn the game, the ins and out of business and understand like, okay, here's how you can make money. Like instead of just trading your time for money, like you can trade money for money. And slowly putting these things together, it's like, stop looking around for whatever everybody else is trying to sell you. It's like, it's all lies. Like the people that are doing it right, and the ones that you can follow as the examples, like time and time again, it'll show you even when they talk about Christ, like for people that believe it or don't believe it, like when you look at the story objectively, he didn't start his ministry until 30, which is where I'm at right now. And it's like, oh, okay, like the fact that I didn't get it perfectly, it's okay. Most of the people that I went to high school with and they like, oh, I, I've got my whole life figured out. Like I know exactly what school I'm gonna go to. I know exactly what major I'm going to have. I'm going to have two and a half kids. I'm going to do this, this, that, and that. I kind of just watched them from a distance. And some of those people, I didn't get a chance to go to the school that they went to first. Like they got in, I didn't. I went to a, a smaller school, but I was happy to just get into that school. And I learned so much more from three years of going to a quote unquote smaller school, but it, it had so much more value to where I understood English, like English 101 better in one six months or four months semester than I did for four or seven years of taking it in high school yeah. elementary school and then um the last thing I'll say is that uh, I might have lost my train of thought but I just said all that to say it's really good to be to like be able to reflect and kind of like say okay I'm I'm here like I, I came from here, I came up and now I, like I can still, I can still climb from here, but there's, there's levels to everything. Like once you get to a new level, there's, 
I guess they say new devils or just more things that you have to to deal with. Well, well, well here's the thing, right? You 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 you're going to continue to learn, and so I think it's a, a false reality if we believe that. And I'm I'm just going to be honest, right? You, you talk yeah. about looking at people afar and all that and this and that, but I think what people have not realized mm -hmm. is that just because you went to Dalton or just because you went to Auburn or whatever, right? it's still game, it's still game <laughs> time. Because what, and this is what I'm going to say. Life is, that's, some people think everything is a cookie cutter, right? Yeah. Cookie, or right, here you go. You, no, no, it's not like that, right? Because you, you're going to, the skills that you learn, you're going to continue to be able to apply over time. So I look at it like, you got a tool belt, right? Like you're in construction, you got a tool belt. Right, and so right. every skill that you're learning, right, is a tool. Mm -hmm. And so I look at stuff that um, I've experienced along the way that has helped me mm -hmm. uh, with, with what I do now, right? So right. that's the way my brain is wired, right? So everything that I've done is, so you got to kind of look at it like that, right? Right, but you're you're acquiring skills to put in your tool book, uh, your tool belt. Right, that'll make you successful, and right. I think there's nothing wrong with that. But a lot of times, uh, Astro, we we we've got the, you know, like the mindset of, well, wait a minute, you know, um, and, and I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be perfectly honest, you know, you know, I used to think I said, oh, okay, I need to, you know, wow, I was like. I want to be a, a principal once I got through coaching. I'm going to be a principal now. But, yeah. you know, now it's amazing that I've gotten, you know, nine, nine years of experience in and I've, you know, been able to do so much, right? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, I'm learning, right? And I'm continuing to learn. And I was like, you know what? That probably wouldn't. And this is just what discernment come in at and insights come in mm -hmm. in life, right? Right, right. Because I started to say, you know, maybe if I would have got that back then, uh, there's some a verse in the Bible in Proverbs says that patience is better than power. And I had to look back and say, you know what? I would the things I know how to do now, mm -hmm. I would definitely not be able to do had I, you know what I'm saying? And so sometimes, right. you know, when you talk about Joseph and everything else, right? Yeah. When you look at where God puts people at and, and uh, with preparation and everything else, sometimes, you know, we're not, and, and we don't realize that, right? Because you, we don't have the right perspective. Right. Sometimes we look at life and say, okay, uh, I, I, want, I want this, this, there, and now. Sometimes that ain't necessarily what we should have right now, if that makes sense. Right. And so sometimes you have to learn, it's a work ethic, it's a way, and it's the skills and a journey you learn along the way, right? Mm -hmm. That's what makes you successful. And here's the other thing too, right? I can honestly tell you, um, with whether it could be you, I had Jose Marino or one of the kids at Dawn. He came up to me the other day. Yeah. He was one of uh, my students I had, but in my classroom, I would put up like uh, words of wisdom, or yeah. we call it words of wisdom, moment of truth. Yeah. And uh, I think it was, you know, we had Bible verses, but I had one of them up there, you know, that said, you know, uh, you know, a tiny compromise today mm -hmm. can lead to a lifetime of devastation. So let mm -hmm. me tell you, this guy came, pulled me up at the class one day and said, hey, you know, this is the situation. My dad got laid off by Mohawk. Mm -hmm. My mom, my mom's uh, disabled. My yeah. little brothers are not eating at home. He said, now, if I join the tiny winos here in Dalton, the game, yeah. he was like, they'll put food on the table. Or he right. said, B, I can drop out. Yeah. I said, don't do that. I said, let me make some phone calls. So I called around, uh, got one of the churches in Dalton. You know, they sponsored the family, put food on the table, mm -hmm. you know, paid the bills for a couple of months. They came up, cried, said, hey, you know, thank you so much because now my son didn't have to drop out and right. we got food on the table. And, you know, it's crazy, right? Because look, look, he got, he ended up, you know, he came up to me the other day. I ended up having his dad went back to Mexico and mm -hmm. they're having a tough, tough time with immigration. But, you know, I sent him some stuff for who I helped Spikey with. Yeah. Eduardo, when I helped him get his green car. So, yeah. I mean... You know, you want to, like, that's the thing, right? Because you want to be able to help people, right? And that's, this is the thing, right? What To me, what defines true success mm -hmm. is not really a title or position. Right. What defines true success is 
when you can call me or Jose Marino or Dardo Gutierrez or, you know, I Carlos Perez. I can go on and on and on. Yeah. But I have so many people reach out to me and say, hey, man, thank you for what you did. Right. Uh, or uh, Spencer Rubel or one of somebody in Dalton, like, man, they think the world of you. Or Jordan <laughs> White. I mean, like, they do. But, like, this yeah. is what you put yeah. in. Right. Nobody told me that back in the day, right? Nobody yeah. was like, oh, we hate it. We hate his guts. Right. But, you know, it's refreshing when you see people out like, hey, man, you made a difference in my team. Right? Yeah. And that's uh, actually was really true success, man. Mm. That's a great point. Yeah, I mean, because if you think like that, then guess what happens, right? It takes care of itself. Yeah. So it's not always about position, right? It's mm-hmm. a, it's really helping people along the way, man. And it's a, But when you do that, right, you do more than what you think or – Charlie, I think, well, you, I think you had graduated, um, or, yeah, yeah, it was the year after you had left, and Dean, yeah. Dean and Chaka, man, he, yeah, yeah, old Dean, man, so, you know, we got around, I mean, he stayed out, and, I mean, he ended up, I mean, he had never, and this is just an illustration, but Dean had yeah. never, um, I mean, never won a tournament, yeah, I mean, he got pinned like eight seconds by this uh, bodybuilder looking guy from Cass. <laughs> so, I mean, listen, I go to the seed meeting. Right. Cass, I mean, it literally, I mean, the whole uh, 215 division was up for grabs. Yeah. I know I don't have a, a prayer. We don't have prayer. They're laughing. I mean, they're like making jokes, man. They're like, oh, right. we got the one seed. We, we ain't even seated. So, yeah. um, but, you know, Dean. For his head getting busted open, this and that, but he was a nose bleeder, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But hey, we go in, win a match, go win another match, mm-hmm. and somebody like, oh, the number one seed got upset. Go <laughs> win another match. The next thing I know, we in the region finals, and Dean go out there, beats the kid, wins yeah. it, and of course, mom break down crying. Yeah. He's never done nothing. He's never, oh, I mean, just broke down screaming, like, wow, like, Thank you for giving him, like, we, we never, but again, the expectations. Nobody right. expected nothing out of him. Right. And to see him be successful like that, that's just, that's amazing, you know. But I can, you know, I can talk about Dean. I can talk about a lot of students yeah. that I had in my, uh, you know, brain. I had a lot of guys, man, that were just no confidence. But then, you know, they, you, you talk to them, get them, they get successful. And that, that's, that's success, right? Cause, yeah, absolutely. you know, position – I'm going to be honest. I mean, position is a, you know, anybody can have a position, mm-hmm. but it's different when you can look back and say, hey, man, this kid was successful. Right. Or was you just the guy that pushed the paper across the table? <laughs> and that's the realities, right? So I think that's the sad part of education. Yeah. Because we really don't have a lot of people that view their job like that. We right. have some people that just say, hey, man, it's another day. And then you got yeah. some people that walk in. And really are bent on making a difference, right? Right. No matter right. what nobody say, they they gonna make a difference. Yeah. And it, I guess from what I remember, I graduated in in uh, two thousand eight in May, and then the following year, after I graduated, you guys went to like the team duels because before we we went from taking one um wrestler to the state tournament to when you came in the first year we had yeah eight eight and then people may have thought it was a fluke the year before but then we did it again the next year and then mm-hmm. after i graduate you guys go to team duels and you play second and then the next year you go back and you win it is that is that how it happened no we we, we went um we went all the way to the finals mm-hmm. uh and uh that was a ride. I mean, that was, again, low. I mean, people, but we made it all the way to the finals, uh, right. got second. Mm-hmm. Then the next year, it was a, it was crazy. It was a snow. It, it The weather was just horrible. Like, it had snowed, so they made us wrestle all one day. We, right. Uh, something happened. I mean, we didn't gotcha. even, I mean, we weren't even seated. You know, we okay. were the defending region champ. Right. So we had to, like, face out two of the number overall two seed. We beat them, blow them out. Yeah. Beat Northwest. I mean, Murray, and I think we made it all the way to the I – mean, we were in the semis against Cass. Right. And we lost 33-32 by a point. Mm-hmm. Because, like, my best 72 guy couldn't make weight. So I put it. But anyway, I mean, yeah. we wrestled back, and then Rome beat – we beat Rome or whatever, and then I think Cass got beat by 
y'all Woodland or whatever. And so that they end up, so we 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 end up being married. So people were like, how did today? I mean, they went to the doors and got fourth. And they were like, wow. And we beat them. They were like, how did y'all not make it? But you know, that you know, they only could let the two two go. So right. I mean, it was one of the things where we got beat by the 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 team that um that that uh you know was number one team in the state. We got beat by a point and because the way that it worked, we had to wrestle only that one day. Yeah. We didn't we didn't get an opportunity to wrestle back for the true true second. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Because the we- the weather was bad, so they made us wrestle on a Monday mm-hmm. and it all had to be done. I had had it been the traditional Friday, Saturday format, mm-hmm. you know, even though we lost, that wouldn't have been a uh, you know, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. We would have yeah. had the ability to wrestle back for the true second, but mm-hmm. because it was a one day event, you know. We lost to the number one team by one, and but yeah. you know that one bad. I mean, it it was what it was. I mean, we, right. uh, but but like you said, it's some. It's really like the adversities like that that stick with you. Whether it's like a match that you lost or some something where you got robbed, it's like some people take that and they kind of dwell on it. But other people take it and they're like, okay, that's gonna fire me up to do it again and come back stronger. Or even. If wrestling isn't working out, let me take it and like put it into education or put it into something I'm passionate about and make that like really make that something um, worthwhile. And like you said, being able to get students coming back to you and saying like, hey, coach, you really changed my life or you really helped me out when basically everybody else didn't care or they like gave up on me and they're like, oh, like, like. Yeah, exactly, right? And that's the thing because people had low expectations and yeah. you learn so much about yourself because now you overcome, you know, you have our expectations. I mean, honestly, that's the reality and that's what we we failing a lot of our young people mm-hmm. because we don't teach them how to come at adversity. I'm just going to tell you, you know, that is the, the, the true matters of life. You know, when I was you want to talk about the press? And I told you, um, you know, what happened to me a couple of years ago and what my girls and all that. And I told you what happened to me and my ex-wife. I told you about all that, man. And that you're talking yeah. about, like, dark, dark, something dark, man. I mean, that's dark. But you know what? What got me through all of that was, you know, I knew what my coaches, they taught me what? You never quit, right? Right. You never give up. I got to be strong for my daughters, right? I couldn't yeah. give up, right? Because that's the thing. That's the thing in my mind. I, I'm not a quitter. Right. And so even though I didn't do anything wrong, right, mm-hmm. I knew – I. and so that's the realities, right? Because sometimes in society, what do people tell you? Well, man, you might as well just throw the towel in, right? Because right. Right. that's what the society teaches you. But sometimes you have to understand, right, hey, you still got to stand on your feet. Right. And that's why you got to be strong. And that's what we, but, but how many times in society we don't tell people that, right? Right. Some people say people do you wrong, do what? To go ahead mm-hmm. and just give up. Boy. Right. Because I had people telling me, like, we don't understand. Like, most people wouldn't have, just would have gave up. I'm like, no, not me. Yeah. And then it's, again, what my coaches, everything that they told me, like I was telling y'all, not to give up, not to quit. Yeah. All that stuff. See, that's when those those messages, right, ring true the loudest. Mm-hmm. Because those were the things that they would tell me, and it made me be like, wow. Mm-hmm. Right? Then it was like, oh, okay, now I see what he was talking about. And that's right. scary, right? Because yeah. this is something they told me back when I was y'all age, 15, 20, and I'm, here I am, a grown man. And everything that my coach told me yeah. is ringing true. But let me tell you, right? Here's the, here's what the, uh, the proof of the pudding is at, Asher. Mm-hmm. Imagine if I had been a kid or a grown man that had not had that, right? Mm-hmm. That did not have my coach pushing me like they did. And right. saying, well, you know, hey, we're not going to let you quit. We're going to we expect excellence. And then imagine if that wasn't in my head. Mm-hmm. See, that's the thing that's scary about our society. Because don't people? some people don't have that to fall back on. Right. I don't have that to fall back on. Some people are like, well, you know what? I'm just going to throw the towel. Right. It's, it's easier just to give up, right? Yeah. But but I learned that uh, from, from my coaches. And, I mean, Asher, honestly, I mean, I'm going to tell you, man, you know, football, my God, I played football in high school 
think we were 0 10 my senior year. I mean, like one, I mean, maybe five wins in four years. 0 mm -hmm. 10, man, we were horrible. Yeah. But you know what? I here's the thing what I learned being on a losing team like that, our wrestling team was decent, but our football team was just horrible. But mm -hmm. what I learned though was this. Even though we didn't win, I mean, this is going to be the craziest thing I'm about to say. We didn't yeah. win a lot. We, senior didn't win with nothing all. Yeah. But I will remember, you know, playing defense, linebacker, defensive line. I remember my coaches saying, you got to sacrifice and you got to, you know, you're doing this for the team. Yeah. And then, you know what? That's what it clicks because I understand that when I operate, it ain't about me, right? It's about a team. It's right. about, you know, and see, this is the thing that a lot of people don't understand. They understand, oh, it's not, no, it's not about being a superstar. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that, uh, that we, we miss so much of in our society that um, we miss that a lot. But, right. but you know, it, it, it's a place for it and stuff. And that's my thing, right? Learning to be better than what, you know, what you, what you are, right? right? And not having, and I'm going to be honest with you. My whole thing was I was never trying to be a, a Georgia Hall of Fame whatever coach. Yeah. I honestly did this. My, my whole thing was this, Ashley. When I walked in the door, I was going to make people – I hate to say this, but they were going to they be feeling uncomfortable because this yeah. is what I meant by it. You weren't going to be shaking my hand saying, hey, welcome today. It got to the point where we were beating pe – people knew. You put us on a schedule, it's, yeah. you might take a loss or get beat up. So right. guess what? It went from after year one, well, wait a minute. I don't know if we want to schedule them. Yeah. And that's yeah. what you want to do, right? Because right. you don't want people just rolling out the red carpet. Yeah. You want people to know, hey, you're going to have to put some work in today, boss. And that's nothing's wrong with that. Yeah. But that comes with a mentality. You got to teach people that. But yeah. you go to a place, uh, Asher, where there's low expectation, and they, I guarantee you they selling them kids short. Yeah. And, and, and it's everywhere, same, right? Yeah. It's in athletics. It's an organization. But and once I mean, you learn yeah. that about yourself, mm -hmm. you know, you have an opportunity to go and take it to, a, you know, and, and be better than what you are. And honestly, Asher, it's not really hard. But what I, what I teach my students to every day, I say, look, man, the biggest thing is this, right? Being committed and being the two C's, commitment and consistency. So at the mm -hmm. end of the day, you got to show up. I said, right. we got people now in America, right? I told the dad today, I said, you know what? Most of our work for, we want people to show up. Yeah. How many people, I don't care if you're an engineer, a teacher, we got people ask you to just want to show up for work. Yeah. Right. And so that's a commitment problem because they've learned, right, that I don't have to, I don't have to work for nothing, right? Yeah. So you're not willing to put the work in. You don't even want to get up. You don't even get out of bed. And so that's a problem in itself. So you got that as a problem. And then, um, you know, you got consistency. So I tell people, look, commitment and consistency. We got that. We, we can do something. Because I told a kid that, I said, it's not hard to be successful, yeah. but most people are not willing to do that. Which, which sounds, uh, how can I say it, right? Because you got that part, then you got the other knuckleheads going to go out here and do something stupid, right? Yeah. So when you teach kids discipline like that, are you disciplined enough not to be putting yourselves in bad positions? Right. Think about, I mean, you, you look at the news every day and it's disturbing because mm -hmm. you see guys doing stuff that you say, oh, my God, like, can you, are you serious, right? Yeah. Like, we had one guy that was a successful uh, administrator, uh, been, you know, doing really good, and then all of a sudden, I don't know, his somebody came with some kind of business where they were selling skin products, yeah. and they end up, the skin, uh, school system got scammed for, like, over a million dollars, man. Yeah. So now this guy, he's African-American, but now he's suspended, you yeah. know, more than likely, like, he's going to be without a job. But, again, why would you put yourself in that position? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So you don't work hard, but then now you got to be smart enough to put yourself in position. But mm -hmm. how many guys out there, you know, were, was not coming, showing up on time in the park, but now you've made bad decisions and you put your – you see what I'm saying? Right, you ain't right. put – so just doing that in itself gives you a chance to be successful. Mm -hmm. But how many people we can't talk to them about that? Right. Too many. All right, because you, you put yourself in bad positions. Right. Right. And so th right. this is, I mean, it's sad. It's the easy, it's sad, Asher, because these are easy things, right? These are easy fits. 
Right. You know, showing up and, and, and putting and, and coming every day with a work ethic. And then the other thing is, right, you know, hey, don't put but even though I'm telling you this, you got people that keep doing it, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, what's what's the uh, the NFL dude, the the, the, line, uh, the, the <laughs> wide receiver, Antonio that, Brown? Yeah. <laughs> then this, I mean, his guy don't sign a nine million dollar whatever bonus thing with New England. Yeah. Then he sends something to this woman, an ex girlfriend, threatening her. To, I mean, like, dude, what are you thinking? Right. But, but again, like, I mean, even this guy would need somebody to say, hey, man, don't put yourself in that position. Right. But that's what I'm saying, right? We got guys even making millions of dollars that are still making stupid decisions. Right. And I think I heard somebody say it best. It's like your talent or your your talent can't keep you – or it has something to do with talent and character, either like your yeah, you're talent – Yeah, you're right. Your, your talent – your you're exactly right. Your talent, um, well, it keep, says your well, talent take, can take you places, but your but it deals with your character. Ultimately, if you don't have character, your your it says your talent can take you, but if you don't have character, it won't keep you. Right, right, exactly. exactly. That's what it means. So your talent can get you in the door, yeah. but ultimately your character keeps you. And if you don't have it, you won't be there for long. Right, right. And it's like it keeps coming up over and over, and, and people kind of act surprised, but it's like, there's nothing new under the sun. Like there's nothing you can paint it, rebrand it, whatever. It's like, it's not, it's really not that new. If you really study like basic principles and you're saying, okay, like, like once you have a certain level of understanding to be like, Oh, okay. Like, here's what's going on. Like the wide receiver, he's doing some foolishness. It's like plain and simple. He doesn't have somebody that like can check him because he's like, Hey, I'm number one in the league. I can just go over here, do this and do this. It's like, yeah, but just because you can, my mom told me this morning, I think is we spent like 10 minutes trying to figure it out, but she had to rush out to work. And it was uh, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 23 or 26. And it was saying that just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. And like, just because something's available to you doesn't mean like you should take advantage of it. And it's, it's like, that rings true so many times because you see people slipping up either if it's like me too scandals or fraud or this or that it's like again and again and again and like the temptation is real it's like it's a real thing but somebody that's really like developed their character and said like these are my non-negotiables and people may look at him like oh you're so weird like why wouldn't you do this like go out here go have fun enjoy yourself it's like yeah, like like you said, making that small compromise right now is going to be detrimental, like later on. True, true, and I mean that's the thing because I think New England said when he threatened the the the, the, the children that their spokesperson like that was the line. I mean, because nobody can. Well, why you got a guy that's? I mean, he had all these other accusations, but now yeah. you're making death threats toward a kid. I yeah. mean, they were like, "Come on!" I mean, no. Right. You can't endorse that. I mean, right. there's no explaining that. So that's the thing that's scary with our society because you have some people, right, it's, it's about the the dollar. And unfortunately, right, if you want to be successful in certain places, you, you're um, you going to have to stay away um, from some of these things and, and just keep yourself out of these positions right. if you want to be successful, right? And so – I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, but other than that, right, it, it's it's not a hard formula. Gotcha. It's just that people eliminate themselves every day because either they don't want to, you know, show up. Yeah. B, they don't want to put the work in. Mm -hmm. uh, C, they just want to quit. Or D, yeah. uh, you know, you know, they put themselves in some bad positions, right? Right. And and that's just that's the truth, man. And no matter who we are, black, white, Latino, or um, whatever we are in life yeah. you know those are uh those uh instances reign true for all of us and so it's just understanding hey i'm gonna I'm make my i'm gonna give myself an opportunity um to be successful right and yeah. here's the thing when you put yourself in position does it guarantee you're gonna be successful absolutely not but does it give you an opportunity yeah yes and that's why i think people have to understand right Put yourself in position, and we have a lot of people that just don't put themselves in position 
mm-hmm. because they continue to make poor choices, right? Right. And, and, and I think that's the thing that, that, um, that people don't understand, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you just have to, you have to keep uh, preparing and, yeah. and continue to be successful. And at the end of the day, right, good things are going to happen. But that, I think that's what the mindset has to be. Uh, too many people just expect um, things to happen overnight, right? Snap my finger and here we go. Right. Um, I hate to tell you, I mean, it's, it's um, to me, I, the way I view life is, is you, you, you attack every day, right? Yeah. And yeah, you can have big picture ideas and small picture ideas and those are all great, mm-hmm. but you have to win the day. And what I mean by that is, like, I see some coaches now say, you know what, today we're going one and over. Yeah. When they focus on, you know, because cause here's the thing. If you focus on the little things, right, yeah. then eventually the big things are going to take care of themselves. But what happens to a lot of people is they get focused on the big picture mm-hmm. and then they neglect, you know, the day-to-day, and then that's where you fail. Mm. So you almost have to uh, – I saw it later today. She says, so y'all mantra the tiger way, la manera del tigre. That's our Spanish name, a part of it. And yeah. I said, yeah. But I told her, I said, she said, well, whoa, this is an exciting day. I said, no, I said, you know, I say every day on announcements, it's another day. Tenemos yeah. otro día, right? I tell her it's another day. Yeah. And, 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 and that's really the truth because that has to be your mantra, right? It's another right. day. But at the end of the day, you, you, you know, you're going to win that day. But right. how many people we don't see like that, Asher? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. They're not consistent. Yeah. They, 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 uh, they don't come through. And I'm, I'm just gonna be honest in education. Why I pushed y'all the most I did every day. I was, you know, like a, I was like a hell on wheels for y'all. Mm-hmm. But the thing was, y'all needed to have somebody that was. Cause see, you mentioned it when you started this conversation. Now, yeah. you talked about the inconsistent coach, yeah. the administrator that couldn't do nothing for you, bark to. You yeah. talked about this, and this is the realities, right? Mm-hmm. Y'all had what we call inconsistency, right? Yeah. Uh, you didn't have stability. Right. And that's dangerous. So the best thing that anybody can have is stability. Mm-hmm. I know. I mean, we live in a smoke and mirror society, right? People want to fudge everything. Yeah. I don't like to do that. I like to just be straight up. I'm going to go right at you. Yeah. And I think that's <laughs> the reality, right, that you – we would be better off, but too many people want to be smoking mirrors or putting uh, lipstick on a pig, you know? Yeah. They want to make stuff look good, not understanding that, you know, Ash, I'm going to be honest. There were days, listen, I never, like, uh, to me, I'm going to show up for work, man. I'm yeah. like, it's going to take something crazy for me. I might as well be dead because right. I'm going to show up. But you got some people that don't have that mentality. Oh, I'm sick. Right. I'm hurt. No, seriously, they'll find any way, they'll find anything for an excuse. Yeah, yeah. They'll find both anything sides not to show up and give yeah. you effort. Yeah. That's a problem in our society. So that's the first thing you got to address. Or, but, but a lot of people don't see the world like that. Right. So do you come in with that mentality of, I'm going to work, you know, I'm going to give I'm gonna give my A game today, or or you just, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm going to find a way out today. Yeah. I think. You know, I think my leg hurt too. Hey, hey, yeah. I just, I just, I just keep laughing because it's all true, and it's like the hey. reason I say I've been on both sides of that because, like, where I was working is that, like, we're trying to work on this project to get nuclear power back in the United States because, I mean, nuclear power is is active; it's our main source of energy. But we hadn't built a new project in over thirty to forty years. And we're working on this project in like um, Southeast Georgia, um, just South of Augusta. And just the attitude that people have out there is just, is very toxic, but you have a lot of people in leadership that have the right mentality and they're trying to like bring people along. It's like, Hey, this thing is much bigger than us. Like you got to stop looking at like, Oh, this sucks. That sucks. So like, you just put on that better attitude where you're like, okay, like I'm going to go and win the day. Like this person wants to complain. That person wants to complain. Like everybody's talking about it. Sucks. I say, no, it's great. Like, it's a wonderful day. I'm doing phenomenal. And they're like, oh, you're so weird. Like, why are you always smiling? I'm like, why not? Like they're sitting there complaining about them having to work. Like what if, whatever it is, like 12 hours or something. I'm like, okay, maybe your management side is messed up, but like, 
I walked half a mile over here to get a book for you. You won't give me the book. I'll walk back there, search for the book myself, go through it and put it up. Like that's my work ethic going into it. But they're just like, oh, that's weird. And they're like, oh, I wish I had your job. And somebody told me that one day and I was like, I don't think you realize what my job is. Like I literally come in here and I have to do your job because you're too lazy to want to hand me a book off the shelf. And it's like, my job is not only to be a facilitator, but every single thing that needs to get done, whether it's surveying, whether it's quality control, whether it's welding, whether it's like um, administration, like I could basically be a glorified secretary, but it's like, whatever it is that needs to get done, I'll do it because it has to be done. But the problem that I did was that I took, out the checks and balances for myself where it's like okay here's work work starts and then here's where it stops like once you go home it stops but like you can't carry people's problems like when they don't want to deal with their own problems you got to just let that be with them like the project is still going on now and it's going to get done i'm sure within the next three years like complete fuel in it and running but like i had to like get out of it to just be like this thing's going to go on without me. I'm replaceable. And what I'm doing now, I've taken this way too much to where it's a detriment to my health and it's just not working out. Like I'm working double time and the person that's supposed to be supporting me, he's not showing up. When he shows up, he's hanging out. And just because we both happen to be black, somebody's saying, oh, I saw you on your phone. I get called into the office and I'm sitting here like, my phone's on my desk. I don't carry my phone out in the field. I know that we're not supposed to be on our phone, but it's like, I, I don't want to hear it. And I was like, okay, fine. Like, you're the boss. I'm going to listen to you. But it's like, instead of me complaining and be like, oh, my boss is racist. He's like this. He's like that. It's like, that's not going to help you get through the day. That's not going to help you overcome whatever you have to do. Take the criticism, understand it, and move forward. Like, I went and I had a conversation with my friend, and I was like, oh, maybe something will change. I leave for four months because of medical and I come back and he's doing the exact same thing. And that's where I'm just like, Hey, it's true what they say. You cannot change people. So stop trying to make somebody into you like be yourself, let them do that work on it for as long as you can. And when it's your time to go, it's your time to go. True. But I, I know you've got the family there, so I, I don't want to keep you too much longer, but I, I definitely appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. Yeah, no problem, buddy. And I mean, listen, man, the best thing that you can always do is keep a strong mindset and um, just, you know, I, and that's the biggest thing, right? You, when right. You, you, how you respond, right? How you going to face obstacles and you know, man, I, like I said, I've had my fair share, but you're going to be successful, you know, with your work ethic, your approach, and then just what you've learned. Before, you've learned. You've got the skills in you. You just, mm -hmm. you, sometimes we don't even really think of it like that, right? Right. Sometimes we don't even look at life like that, but I've always had to reflect and, and, and look at what I've been able to do just to say, okay, hey, because, you know, we all going to have to. We've all faced that, man, and, and um, you know, but, I, you know, it's funny, right? You know, I left, I was at Brainerd for six years, and golly, and that, that's a rough school. And, <laughs> but, you know, even spending that much time in that rough school, it has taught me a lot where we're at. Like, we got recognized by the state for this uh, positive behavior thing we've got. But a lot of stuff that we, I mean, we got recognized by the state uh, like a week ago, right? But... Mm -hmm a banner and all it is, but the sad thing is, I've been telling people, Asher, really, a lot of stuff we're doing with the program I have now at my school, I learned yeah. at the, the school that was just God horrible, right? <laughs> the one I spent six years with that, right, you know, right. taking guns, etc., was the foundation, which yeah. is scary, right? But that's how life works sometimes. Yeah. So it's all those negative experiences, you know, got me to where I'm at. So now I've actually been able to take all of that and turn it into a positive. Mm. So, you know, now I'm kind of in the mindset of, you know, take a negative and take it to a positive, right? And right, right. be solution oriented, right? That's what you should want to do because it's easy for everybody to point out the negative, right? Yeah. 
it's easy to spot that out. It's easy to say, oh, you're not trying. Yeah. You're not accomplishing anything. But then it takes another person, uh, Asher. And this is, if you if you don't, you know, learn anything else about life, this is really true. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have to take the Dalton. I mean, I, I could have been like whatever, but I took it mm -hmm. because I wanted I wanted to make y'all better. I wanted to say, hey, we could went from taking one to eight, whatever. How many y'all? Eight of y'all went to the state. Yeah. I wanted to prove people wrong, right? Yeah. And the biggest thing was this. Y'all got some confidence that you, all the mother guys, got something that's going to carry with you the rest of your life. You got a piece of confidence, right? Yeah. And that, to me, that mattered more than anything else. But a lot of people didn't see it that way. They just said, oh, that's just a whatever. Let them go out there and have a little bit of two, two or three matches. I didn't see it that way. Yeah. And you get something that, that you, you build on and it builds on the rest of your life. You know, you can reflect on that and, and build on the rest of your life. And yeah. that is what so many people fail to realize, right? Yeah. That's what people fail to realize, man. But, you know, you're doing a good job. You're going to continue to be successful. Um, I think it's a, one of those things where always being able to reflect is, is powerful mm -hmm. because now you, like you said, you can look back and say, oh, I know now what, uh, Coach Mitchell was chewing me out. Yeah. Well, at the time you didn't like it, but you can reflect on it. Yeah. And I think that's the what we're missing in our country. We just don't we don't give kids those experiences right. And then now, well, I'm gonna give up on life because I I, I didn't understand that. And right. that's the thing. I think everybody's putting people's lives like that for you to be successful in the long run. Right. That's awesome. So, yeah, you you got it, Asher. I mean, you've got all the tools, man. I mean, you've got all the tools. And so at the end of the day, right, you're running your own race. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you're going to be successful. You know, you just always got to know that in your head. I mean, if you got to, you know, if you want to, you know, video me again or talk to me, that's fine. For sure. I don't have a problem sure. with that. But I think it's one of these things where we don't preach enough positive. Because I'm, I'm going to tell you this and I'm going to let you go. Yeah, because I gotta put the girls in the bath. But here's the truth, Asher. This is the problem in our country. Mm -hmm. We are so we point out the bad so much in our country. Yeah. And it, it, oh, he did this. He did a drive-by shoot. He was in the homeless. Did but you know what? We don't point out, and this is sad, man. Yeah. We don't point out because I found this out with you know when I with the girls and stuff. Somebody said to me one day they were like. You're actually a good dad. They like somebody was <laughs> like, it was one day, and you know, I had the girls. That's yeah. like, man, you're actually, you know what? You're not like one of these black dudes that are, you know, got eight and ten baby mamas and, yeah, uh, you know, uh, not paying child support. And they were like, you're actually a great dad, man. They're like, wow. But yeah. I said, you know what? But how many? But how many times when you turn the news, you don't see that? Right, right. It's, In the news, you don't yeah. get told that, right? In the news, no. you just, oh, wait a minute. Did you pay your child? Like, so you get these images, and so some yeah. people actually believe. Yeah. Right. They believe the negative. And so right. here's the thing, right? We don't that's, actually that's all that gets put say, out. hey, you're, you're working, you're, 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 you know, you're in a career, you're doing, so here's the thing, right? You're doing good. Yeah. But then, you don't, but our society don't point that out. Right. They'll point out the, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. The negative sales. The negative sales. And so we are in our society. It's like the people that do right, <laughs> it's almost like, I mean, it's sad, right? But it's like, yeah. it, there is no slap on the back. It's like you right. get up and do right every day and do what you're supposed to do. And there's no like, oh, hey, good job because yeah. you did the right, right thing. The negative sells. And so yeah. really that's the sad part, but that's what we become. Nobody want to celebrate the positive. Right. Because you're right, negative sales. Well, we're not going to celebrate that, but yeah. it's something about, I tell my teachers, you know, mm -hmm. my best teacher is a teacher that just comes in every day and they're consistent. Yeah. That's a win. You ain't you ain't too flashy. Yeah. You know, you're not somebody that we got to, you know, write up because they don't want to do whatever. Right. You just, you know, you show up, you do what we ask you to do. There you go. Gotcha. So okay. that's, that's the sad thing about our country. We don't do enough of that, man. Right. So, but you're you're a winner, man. You're doing good. Thank you. I'm gonna All I'm right. gonna text you a, a number for something you can uh, use in the morning 
something to kind of uh, keep you up and keep you uh, a firm, be around gentlemen like yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll text yeah. it to you. Yeah, go ahead. All right, thank you, man. I got to put the girls in the bathroom. You're thank welcome. You. Thank you, coach. All right, thank you, Asher. Take care. All right, buddy. Thank you.